Hi everyone and welcome to Green Monk TV. Uh, we're here at the Adobe Buildings West Tower and with me on the show today I have Randy Knox. I'm the Senior Director of Global Workplace Solutions for Adobe and in that role I oversee our facilities, real estate and physical security. Okay, and Randy, you, uh, this building is LEED certified? That's correct. It's one of four that we have that's LEED EV Platinum certified now. Superb. And we're standing in front, we're standing in your, your uh, kind of patio area with uh, some lovely grass and some nice plants around. What are the significance of these? Well, what we like to show folks here is what we've done to reduce our outdoor water use or, or our landscape irrigation. We've uh, put in drought tolerant plantings. Uh, all the plantings are native Californian. It's a, a, a drought tolerant fescue grass that we're using. We put in drip irrigation under the lawn. We have drip irrigation everywhere. Uh, our systems are all monitored by what we call ET controllers. That stands for evapotranspirational. What they do is they monitor the communications between weather satellites and ground stations. And then based on the weather that's coming in, it determines how much watering, if any, is required that day. And through the use of the technology and the drought tolerant planting and the drip irrigation, we've reduced our uh, our landscape uh, irrigation by 76%. 76%? Yes. Wow, that's impressive. Randy, we're in the bathroom in the, the West Tower. Can you tell us why we're here? Yeah, this is quite a show place for Adobe. We like to bring our visitors here. <laughs> but uh, what we refer to this as our touch-free bathroom, and we believe it offers a lot healthier uh, environment for our employees. Basically, you don't have to touch anything while you're in here. Everything is either mo is motion sensitive. Uh, for example, on our faucets, the water is motion and as is the soap dispenser. And then we use our, our automated towel dispensers. We have waterless urinals and we are, it's automatic flush valves on our toilets. When you, when you say waterless urinals, uh, they, is it just that they detect when someone walks away and then they spray water? No, no, they use no water. They, they, uh, it's, it's a chemical reaction that handles the waste and chemically treats it so that there's no water required to flush it. Wow, brilliant. Yes. And go on. As a consequence, we've saved uh, over 36% on our domestic water use. Wow. So Randy, you were just showing us the uh, cooling outside. Can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yes. I'd like to show off the cooling tower and, and share a story. Um, one of our building engineers oversaw a, a bill come in one day for sewer use. Well, sewer basically is built on whatever your intake is. They bill that as an outtake. And we found out that we were losing a lot of our water through evaporation of our cooling tower. So the building engineer was asked if he could measure that and quantify it, and he said, sure. So he put water meters on the intake and water meters on the outflow and took that variance, and we went to PG&E, or to the local water company, and they uh, rebated us $20,000 for the previous three years, and they've reduced our uh, sewer bill by $10,000 a year. Because you're not pushing out as much water through the sewers, it, it, it's going up through the, the water towers exactly, in evaporation. Exactly. Lovely. You also mentioned that you're staging uh, the, 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 the coolers to reduce your overall demand spikes? Right, exactly. And uh, we figured there was a programming cost there of about $575 to do that, to change the staging and we're saving about twelve thousand dollars a year and that, that works because the, instead of getting cumulative spikes of all of the, uh, the, the, the the coolers coming on at the same time they're staged to come on individually one after the other that's correct and therefore you don't get large spikes and you're not built on the large spikes you're built on the, the the kind of flat line right okay super so Randy what are we seeing in this room uh, we're in the boiler room and we're looking at our, our uh, boilers and uh, talking a little bit about some of the things that we've uh, incorporated here. We um, changed the runtime, modified the run times, uh, cost us about $600 to do that modification. We're saving about $42,000 a year. Wow. And we also installed um, digital controls on our boilers. That cost us $800 and saving us about $1,800 a year. So about a six month payback on that project. And these are just for boiling water and maybe some air heating? Yes, right. And how are those uh, modifications actually saving money? Where's, where's the saving coming from? Well, I think what was happening was we weren't uh, monitoring the, uh, tight enough before, and so they were running longer than they had to, so we have basically changed the run time. And the digital controls give us the capability of doing that. So, and you can do it remotely? Yes. Excellent. Randy, we're standing in front of one of your printers here. Uh, tell me the story about how you're reducing paper use. Well, one of the things I like to point to is not all the ideas come out of corporate, which most people in a large corporation know anyway, but uh, this is one of the ideas that actually came from one of our uh, 
uh, our remote offices, they'd gone to double-sided printing and wanted to know why corporate hadn't done that. So we've adopted it corporate-wide now, and we've actually reduced our paper use here in San Jose by about 40% as a result. So it's it's uh, default. The, the, the printers, all the printers, default to uh, double-sided. Yes. Okay. You have Excellent. to force single-sided printing now. Okay. Brilliant. Another story I like to tell, uh, talking about, uh, and since we're close to the break room, um, we were always having trouble getting rid of bottled water here in San Jose. And uh, in our Ottawa facility, our facility manager up there, Paula Fitzgerald, implemented, uh, got rid of all bottled water and went to filtered water systems. Mm -hmm. And uh, she sent me uh, a justification saying how much money she was saving monthly. So I extrapolated what it would take for San Jose, which is a much larger facility, and I went to the CFO and said, would you be interested in saving $270,000 a year? Guess what he said. <laughs> uh, so we're in Adobe's uh, building control room, and with me I've got Ted Ludwig, who's in charge of the systems here. Uh, Ted, you're going to give us a demo of some of the things on screen there? Certainly, be happy to show you. Great. We've developed an uh, interesting page for data center management. A uh, good forecasting tool for uh, the folks to make sure that they are uh, informed enough to make all these appropriate decisions. And we can look in an executive summary here of one of our server rooms. Uh, environmental conditions, uh, amount of cooling required to keep the space comfortable, uh, servers and such, uh, our percentage of load uh, electrically, uh, and a lot more information, um, certain statuses of equipment and such. Uh, we're able to look inside any of the spaces and see real-time ele electrical readings, uh, temperatures, uh, humidities, um, all real-time, allows a um, minute control and um, a very speedy response to any problem conditions. So, so in these uh, server rooms, you have a stack of sensors monitoring all this information all Absolutely, the time? Absolutely, stacks and stacks. Uh, we have uh, 30,000 uh, sensors throughout the campus. Uh, we're about uh, one million square feet of office space on top of a million square feet of garage, uh, four large server rooms, um, all running and happily keeping us uh, employed. <laughs> um, electrically, we can drop down into any of the main panels and um, use this information to be very deliberate and smart about how we fill out a data center without unnecessarily increasing the risk by uh, overloading a circuit or uh, you know, potentially tripping a breaker. Okay. Uh, you're involved with uh, demand response programs with uh, your local provider, PG&E, as well? Absolutely. Um, any of the large electrical users in the uh, state are asked to uh, participate, and Adobe, of course, uh, was willing to do so, uh, not just to get the uh, uh, energy uh, reduction costs and, uh, you know, cost per KW, but to um, try to do their part. Um, so we're able to kind of show our, our uh, energy reductions uh, if we use our energy dashboard here, and I'll bring this up just a second. And so what we're looking at is a load profile. And so we've divided our building loads up into uh, what is the building, what is the server room, and how they interact with each other. And so we're able to see here uh, the different days of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, the weekend, and the portion of today. Uh, lots of information uh, electrically, uh, so we can try and um, increase our performance by um, eliminating waste. And so basically, the better we do our job, given the current conditions, uh, the more money we save and the uh, better the company does. And the less carbon you're emitting. Less carbon we're emitting, of course. Um, we're able to track this information in dollars and cents and know what the data centers cost us, uh, as well as the building. Um, we can also click right over to the tab that gives us um, CO2 emissions. Now, right now, we're just tying in our electrical usages, and next is natural gas. Okay, so this is, this, these are actually charts of the CO2 emitted by the facility based on uh, electrical usage at the moment, and as you say, you'll be tying in natural gas shortly. Exactly right. Wow, great. Uh, are you monitoring water through this as well? Oh, definitely. Um, water is one of our biggest successes. We've had lots of success in reducing our water usage, and um, the ways we've done that is uh, simple things, um, just identifying the water wasting. Um, also, uh, in terms of landscape, for instance, um, choosing plants that don't use a lot of water. Um, and on top of that, we actually tied in um, uh, weather satellites into our controllers so that we don't water when it's raining. Seems simple, but uh, you try and get your building to do it. <laughs> Superb. Um, gosh, we've also developed a, a forecasting module to help us to, again, uh, improve our operations so that we're uh, being as efficient as possible given the, the current uh, circumstances. And so what we've done is we've tracked uh, weather uh, patterns that are similar to today's. Uh, we've chosen five out of our past two, three, two or three years of information. And the best we've ever done is this lower line. And the worst we've ever done 
is this upper line, and that's based on today's conditions. Uh, here, in the red, is what we're doing today. So obviously we're in between the best and the worst, and then we're shooting for the best, of course. Yep. Um, we tied in this weather line to show the outdoor air temperature because that has a huge impact on how much energy we use. And so uh, anything we can do to eliminate these, these spikes and peaks um, is going to end up saving us energy. Fantastic. Great. Super. Uh, Ted, thanks for being. That's been fantastic. You're very welcome. Thanks for coming.